All right, we're going to work with the transformations of the cosecant of x and secant of x functions. So above that, I wrote their inverse functions. And what you do to graph the cosecant and secant is you first graph all of the steps of the inverse function from our previous videos. So steps one through six, you're going to graph your sine function or your cosine function. After that, you're going to create vertical asymptotes when the x values are undefined, which are your x intercepts. And then step eight is you're going to reciprocate between the asymptotes. So they look like parabolas. They're not really parabolas, but that's what they look like. So let's go ahead and do an example. So here is y equals the cosecant of x minus pi. <clears throat> so we're going to graph first the inverse function. So the inverse of the cosecant is your sine function. So we're going to graph this function first. So step one is we identify the amplitude. The a value is 1. We won't really have an amplitude, but this helps us to identify if we have a stretch. So no vertical stretch. If our a value was negative, we'd have a horizontal reflection. We don't. Then we identify our b value. Our b value is in front of the x. So 2 pi over 1 is 2 pi. Then if there's a vertical shift, there would be a d value. In this case, there is none. Then you find your phase shift. So you work with these two equations to find your left and right endpoints. So that's right here, x minus pi. So the left endpoint, x minus pi, set it equal to 0, and then solve it for x. So you're going to add pi to both sides. Your right endpoint, set it equal to 2 pi, and then solve it for x. So add pi to both sides, and you get 3 pi. So we're going to start by graphing the sine function. And we'll want two full revolutions labeling your x and y axes. So I'm going to go down and graph that first. So to review, there was not a vertical stretch, no horizontal reflection, it had a length of pi, no phase shift. Or sorry, there was a phase shift of right pi. So I'm going to say this is pi. Create my four increments. And I'm going to just go ahead and stretch this out a bit. And this would be 2 pi. Actually, that left end point was 3 pi. All right, so halfway point would be 2 pi. Halfway between pi and 2 pi would be 3 pi over 2. So each increment is pi over 2. This would be 5 pi over 2. Now I'm going to do my amplitude. So this would be negative 1, and that would be positive 1. Now, in the color red, I'm going to create the sine function. So I'm going to start with my first point. Remember, sine function goes up 
then it goes to the middle, then it goes to the bottom, and then to the middle. So this would be the first revolution. So we've now graphed one through six. I'm gonna go ahead and graph one more revolution so you can start to see a better picture of our inverse function. So I'm gonna to go to the left and create that same pattern. So the next increment is a pi over two. I should have done that. This should say it says pi over two here. And then zero and then negative pi over 2, and then negative pi, and then negative 3 pi over 2. So this should have been stretched out a little bit here, but that's okay. All right, so I'm starting to graph. So this is a little bit stretched out incorrectly. All right, now we've graphed the sine function. We're gonna to start to create our vertical asymptotes whenever it is undefined or touches the x-axis, the x-intercept. So we have one at three pi. We have another one at two pi another one at pi, and you can continue that. All right, now I'm gonna just change colors to purple. So for your purple, you're gonna do your equation, y equals the cosecant So between these asymptotes, I'm gonna create my reciprocal function. like such. And that is our y equals the cosecant of x minus pi graphed out. And the red was the sine of x minus pi.